I'm going to SSH on an EC2 instance that we have uh, deployed for this demo. We have checked out uh, the Zenco deployment uh, stack. Uh, it's a Docker stack that, that leverages. It's sorry, the could you speak up? Because there's a lot of uh, oh, sorry. computing yeah. going on over here, so it's harder. Thank you. Uh, so we're leveraging Docker Swarm for the first iteration of the deployment. Uh, in the next versions, we will uh, be able to deploy on Mesos as well as Kubernetes. Um, so the deployment is very simple, um, thanks to the Docker Swarm uh, format. <coughs> so this is what it's doing now. So is this a single EC2 instance, but it could be multiple EC2 instances as long as they all have Dockers, they're a part of the Docker Yeah, form. so actually we have four of them. Okay. Uh, I'm only connected, connected to one. one but uh, you, you can see here that we have uh, four instances. And if we look at how the services are deployed, uh, we can see that we, we have a front-end, uh, the, the S3 protocol itself, that, that's on a, on a specific node. on node 134 and for example the, the data storage uh, node is on node 10. So it's, a, it's actually handling the processes distribution and failover when one of the nodes disappear. So maybe, Giorgio, you want to show the portal before sure. I... Okay. Sounds good. So the, um, the idea is that when you start an instance, uh, it can report some statistics to a uh, Zenco portal. So let me start the UI. So that's the preview of the UI. So this is something we're going to host. Uh, that is the Zenco management, hosting management portal. <coughs> so the Zenco instance is somewhere else. This is just for management. Uh, so let me get started by logging with my uh, Gmail account. I hope everybody has Gmail. And, but this is actually monitoring uh, the um, uh, instance that uh, Rashad started. But I can see uh, the capacity that's used, capacity available. This is a graph, not very exciting because there's no activity, but <laughs> I'm going to create some about the capacity uh, that I have on that machine. Uh, how much CPU is it, is it consuming? Uh, and, and so this is given for free uh, by Zenko when you deploy an instance. Uh, over time, we'll add more services into that, and we have a search console that's going to be added into it. There's a link here, but it doesn't work yet. Uh, and so that to make it as easy as possible uh, to use your Zenko instance. So here, if I go on settings, uh, this is where I would configure, and actually it works, I will configure my access keys. So uh, how do you generate S3 access keys? It's not that easy. So via here we can generate keys. So for example, if I want to create a user uh, CFD, just generate that key. And that will, the key has been generated, and that actually pushes that config to the Zinco instance. And now you can use that key to access your, uh, your store. So make it as easy as possible to manage these kind of instances. Uh, if you want to do a backup of your data, uh, you would have a configuration here where you can decide where you want to back it up. And if you insert your credentials of where you want to store the backups, uh, we'll have a hosted backbit instance that will copy the data to uh, whatever uh, backup target you want to do. So we'll make it as easy as possible to use Zenko and benefit from, uh, from multi-cloud. Uh, let me go back here. Um, and so, you want to do some activity? Yep. 
So I'm going to copy the access and secret keys that Giorgio just created. We have a show button, it's just for the demo. <laughs> You're not supposed to store your secret keys. <laughs> okay. So, the first thing is we're going to look at what, we, what buckets we have. We don't have any buckets yet. Uh, oh, authentication work is already a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to create a, a bucket and put a one gig gigabyte file. Uh, and we're going to look at the, the activity during the, that time. So we, we're, we're using no CPU and we have about three gigabytes free. Um, so now we're going to copy it. So we see a small spike in CPU. Um, it's very visible because we're using a, a T2 micro. micro yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very small. One of the smallest. Uh, so one of the smallest. So. And you see the available capacity is uh, decreasing in uh, real time. So, quick question about the access keys. You created an access key through the portal already. That's yeah. an access key in AWS IAM, right? No. So it's, no, it's, it's giving it. you permissions to an S3 bucket in AWS, or is that just in the, the Zenko? It's file? only, the scope is only the Zenko instance. Okay. Uh, management of S3 IAM and all AWS resources uh, is not the scope of, it, of this particular. Okay. This is to help you deploy your own Zenko. Yep. Kernel. Okay. Um, okay. So now we're going to delete the file and see the space being reclaimed. That works. Um, I'm going to delete the bucket and to prove that it was not staged, <laughs> I'm going to delete the user. <laughs> and just redo an LS to see the buckets, and I don't have the right to. So we see, thank you, Rashid. This was one of the feedback we got from users, which is we need a UI to configure uh, this thing. And so we're hosting the UI, so it makes it easier to manage. And you can manage multiple instances, and then you will see the search coming in, uh, the backup, the lifecycle management, all in the same central uh, interface. Let me just go back to the deck. Uh, yes. The last one for Zenko. We are doing a Zenko webinar uh, next week, where we'll go more in details uh, on uh, the portal and what you can do with it. Uh, which will answer what multi-clouds mean, which is not an easy question. Uh, how can you use pri both public and private with Zenko? Uh, and uh, how can you get involved uh, as a partner if you want to build extensions and do some things on top of Zenko? So the webinar link is here, zenko.io slash webinar, and it's going to be next August 3rd, is Thursday, I think, uh, live. Okay, thank you. Just the, the whole metadata search, what is that? Is that stored in S3 server itself? or Because obviously that metadata could get large-ish if you, and you obviously your searches want to be performant. What, what do you actually store that in? Yeah, so the next session is, is on metadata. So I'll take a question in the next session.